Good morning, everyone. Welcome back to ETS. Thank you, Aaron, for the introduction. We're excited to have all of you back at ETS day two. And um, it's my pleasure to have Deepak Garg, the founder and CEO of Smart Energy Auto with me here from Irvine, California. Deepak, how are you this morning? Pretty good, Jason. I think we hope you're doing great. Thank you, thank you. Thanks for taking some time to talk through uh, the customer experience in, in, the ter in, te in the context of of energy transformation with us today. I know you're you're very busy these days uh, warning a global company. And so my first question, just to start off with, as we talk about some of the three pillars of this event, and one of them is the future of customer centricity in the context of energy transformation. Mm -hmm. So with that, you're also transforming your company and growing. You got several offices across the country, Australia, Singapore, India, Canada, and of course in, in the US. What has been one of your biggest challenges during this time of COVID? Is it remote work? Is it serving customers, hiring? Would love to just hear a little bit about that journey. Well, thank you, Jason. And uh, definitely, I think we all know that, you know, globally, uh, we got this pandemic, you know, impact every side of the world, you know, uh, doesn't matter people, doesn't matter utilities, doesn't matter our customer, doesn't matter the people working for the company. But I think we are very fortunate, you know, we have a very dedicated team, a committed team, you know, and we are very passionate about what we do. And we want to make sure that industry which is serving 24 by seven, you know, commodity to everybody and without that we cannot live. We have to back them up with the 24 by seven and add another 24 by seven support, you know. So I feel very proud, you know, uh, yeah. the team was able to support, but definitely the physical challenge of connectivity is, you know, globally was there uh, first two weeks was a little bit challenging i will not say that you know it is it is not remote work we allowed our team to globally operate to remote work because we were supporting a lot of hiring we did uh, just because of the world transformed so fast in last six months when we talk about it and i know that uh, it's a uh, it's really a big strain to globally to everybody but at the same time is utilities across the globe realize the fact, and I think I will not quote the name of the utility, but this is one of the executive for a very major North American utility. Uh, he and she called me, says, Deepak, I just want to thank you for your team and SAW because your product, your digital platform become the business continuity platform for us. We are able to operate. We are able to connect with the customer. You ca my, my customers can do everything with the platform. That make you feel pretty good. That make yeah. you feel Yes, this is what you started with. You want to make sure the customers are connected to the utilities, irrespective of any problems. Doesn't matter, it's a good time, bad time. I think it's really worked out pretty good. And, and I can tell you, I think the utilities supporting us, we are supporting them, uh, and it's a lot of team joining, you know, and some challenge for reasons, you know, uh, mm -hmm. sending the laptops, networks, you know, I think we all got into it, but it's, it's going, Going pretty good, yeah. Thank you, thanks for sharing that. Uh, you talked a little bit about the, the customers there and, and we've been you know, fortunate to partner with, with SCW on several initiatives. And one thing that your team and, and SCW constantly stresses is the importance of educating communities and creating awareness about water, energy, sustainability. Uh, you're a big advocate that that's one of the key pillars of, of really just clean energy transformation. Can you talk a little bit about how you see some of the customers educating their communities, either with, with the, within your platform or other innovative ways you've seen that being done over the past six months? Sure. And I think, uh, Jason, thank you for the question because it's truly very important. You just made a very important point is the customer or the people is part of the energy and water ecosystem. And as a tech company, what we can do to ensure is the people are able to connect you know, to the, this bigger cause of when we talk about the water conservation, we talk about energy efficiency, we talk about sustainability, we talk about the reliability. We know the utilities all, from last hundred years been working very hard to provide us, all of us. We are also the customer of the utilities, uh, you know, without any disruption unless something happened, 24 by seven service, right? And for us to make sure the customers, which is the billions of people who take this service every day, every second, are connecting that dot. So we 
we put this model of you know educating empowering you know and engaging across everywhere every utility communities to build it up so that they have a platform doesn't matter we're talking about <clears throat> the native mobile apps doesn't matter we're talking about some people want to choose you know for good reasons the ivrs where the phone calls come in some people wants to use the new latest ai chatbots what we did is we want to make sure every channel globally in whatever the context it is customer want to connect to the utilities anytime they should be able to connect the dots you know and during this six month i think we are realizing the fact how much we are depend upon the digital platforms we never thought eds is going to be happening virtually you know yeah. and i think congratulations to your team able to pull it off and making this great virtual event happening globally this this is the world we are living in and i think we made sure in last 10 years we we started with the digital engagement to now digital transformation to digital channels we made sure everybody around the globe the people the customer have every channel available to connect to the customer and it's become more prominent in last 6 months ki we need to depend upon digital channels thank you thank you and, and appreciate the kind words yeah hats off definitely all the work to to our team the z prime team who's done an amazing job i uh, can't definitely take any credit there they they definitely uh, rose up to the challenge i think as a lot of companies and teams have uh you touched a little bit about this uh and i've also heard uh, some of your team members talk about this this contactless experience uh self service uh certainly very popular in traditional uh, uber delivery groceries we see a lot of that happening uh you guys have been pretty vocal about bringing that into this utility space can you can you talk about the, how that can maybe also tie into the broader picture of of clean energy transformation by by providing that next level of experience true and jason uh, i think it's a very important because we feel uh the people wants to get educated about how they can be the part of this clean energy tra- transition how they can be efficient how they can pretty much save what utilities have been trying to do for the last 30 years and i think uh, <clears throat> where we put our unique value uh drivers in our platform from a day one is we didn't took it one dimension one use case as a part of the product offering we took it the platform from the day one we want to make sure is customers have a different journeys customer wants to do multiple things with the multiple times at the multiple engagement you know doesn't matter when you talking about when the new customer is starting a service they want to have a contact less you know can they do it online can you can they do it on their mobile app you know can they have all this information secure when they transaction rather than doing with the 10 different platforms so that really drove us to a point if we are able to build the platform which provide the completely end to end platform service for the customer to serve by a utility on the digital platform fully integrated vertically integrated horizontally integrated and ensure that when this is happening customer really feeling pretty good easy not difficult about engaging and we are very proud you know i think we uh, the, your team definitely seen that on linkedin and other social media we feel very proud in 2016 and 15 we took the challenge when everybody in the world was talking about great uber experience experience is most important thing we took it to the our soul of the company core dna ki we want to make sure the experience is friction we need to improve the friction to make it the experience very easy and i'm very proud you know when our one of the very big utilities serve 5 million plus people their app rating was be, uh, better than uber so we actually tag uber and saying thank you for inspiring us to be the better than uber because you always going to learn from somebody and and i i feel very proud now our multiple utilities thousands and millions of people are rating uh, the app and their platform which is definitely run on sw better than uber and which is good you know we are trending to the 4.7 4.6 4.8 rating on the app store and we we feel very proud the utilities customers are feeling very easy to connect you know and having the same experience what they see around you know doesn't matter they're interacting with the retailer doesn't matter they're interacting with uber and amazon for any reasons thank you so grow, growing this conversation a little bit there towards ai and, and where this technology is going 
Um, it seems like it has made a way into this in, in 2020, and we're going to see this in 2021. Do you, do you see those capabilities and use cases continuing to expand uh, from the customer experience side in 2021? For sure. You know, I think, Jason, I think uh, uh, we are start talking more AI today. And I think for reasons, uh, definitely, I think we need to give a credit to the people who are promoting that. But we've been applying the AI from the day one, you know. And I think we are all computer science engineers. We know that we, we studied the AI even 20. This AI is not a new word, right? AI yeah. is intelligent. But what we are doing differently is to ensuring that we picked up the use case, which is connected next and uh, end to end, which is giving the value to the consumer, just not for the sake of doing AI, do the AI, you know, truly understand what is the use case, what's the benefit of the customer, what's the benefit of the utilities, what's the benefit of the utility operation, the customer service. And then what we did is uh, we say as a unique and we, I don't know how to trademark that, but we want to make sure that there's been trademark. We are actually not using technology in terms of AI. We actually connecting human intelligence, which we call HI handshaking with the AI. We don't want to make artificial intelligence only the key driver. We are making sure with our engagement, empowerment, and engaging with the customer, which is the millions of years of intelligence, which is human intelligence, connect the dot with the, the artificial intelligence, which is the machine, the great machine learning. We have a great data available to us. How we make the our life of a customer. And our utility is very easy. I'm sorry, I get a little bit excited about these things, but we just love that we're picking up the core use cases, which people didn't even think about. If people tell us we are five years five years ahead, the good thing is it's not about to be ahead. Are you solving the problem for today no. and tomorrow? And I think we feel very proud. We are able to use the true AI for the humans who can proactively can take the decision, irrespective of whether they're sitting in operation. They're sitting in a customer service. They, they're actually as a customer. You know, they take a right decision at the right time. Thank you. So we'll see if a few questions come in. We have a few minutes left. Uh, there is one question I didn't want to ask you. You guys there uh, in Irvine, really close to the Silicon Valley. How do you think some of the fallout from some of the the broader tech uh, perceptions going on right now? They've been going on for maybe two years in terms of data and privacy. Um, how do, does that impact? what some of the utilities may do given that they're traditionally risk averse and how they can continue to use data to, to better enhance that customer experience? No, I think uh, I can tell you, Jason, I think for us, the data privacy was a core. We are the partner with the utilities. We don't want to be in the business of saying we got the data, we want to sell the data, we're going to make the data. No, we are in the serving business for this industry day one and we protect the data more than our own data, you know, for the utilities. So we definitely, uh, and utilities knows that, that we are the biggest power company to the biggest gas company globally are running on a platform and digital trans transform platform for us, with us, you know, and we make sure one thing, data privacy, security, scalability, the intelligence, the integration is the core pillar of our platform. So I think, that actually ensured a lot of utilities, yes, going with SCW, at least be secure, you know, not only our data, but at the same time, this company is in the, in, not in the business of, you know, saying we are doing cloud, we are doing mobility, we are doing everything, anything which you, we use, we build for the utilities in the partnership, you know, and that's where I think the trust level are more higher right now on those fallouts than, than before. So last question, Deepak, there's a lot going on right now. Obviously there's an economic crisis, there's a pandemic, health crisis, uh, wildfires, so, so much to deal with. At the end of the day, it can become overwhelming, um, but obviously you're, you're a highly positive view. So what is there something that really sticks out that really gives you, it makes you optimistic that this is that turning point for this clean energy transition, given this, this time we are in, in history? No, thank you, Jason. I think that's a very, very good question. And I think I will just add one thing is industry is doing enough to do. Doesn't matter if you're talking about solar, the wind, the natural gas and everything. I think there are very, very great players who are doing the best what they can do. What we are doing is, and we collectively need to do, and we, I am very optimistic, billions of people across the globe 
are now very positive to connect to the industry. We, we are actually bringing that gap to the smaller and smaller and smaller, which is really helping us to ensure that this transition is not industry transition. People able to understand why we need to go to the cleaner world. We, we need to secure our future and we can only secure the future when we do and take the action today. And I think that something is truly very powerful for all of us from utilities to the governments, to communities, everybody is looking into this. And I think we are able to energize the billions of people, you know, and their mindset towards it and which is making this thing happen. And I don't think so, it's going to be concept, it's going to be a PhD topic, is we are going to be there or not, or how are we going to be there or not? I think people are committed for that. Thank you. I think that's the perfect way to end in the call to action is that we all need to do this today and find that whatever that step is, big or small, to me, that is a, a fantastic takeaway. Thank you so much for joining us today, Deepak, and congrats to you and your team who continue to do uh, great work across, across the globe. And we really appreciate your time and your partnership. Uh, have a good one. Thank, Thank you. you, Jason. Thank you, Jason.